Hello everyone. Welcome back to another English online session. Today I am going to explain you the 8th chapter from the text Hornbill. The name of the chapter is Silk Road. The story is written by Nick Middleton. This chapter is about the narrator's journey from slopes of Ravu to Mount Kailash to complete the Kora. To bid him farewell, Lamo gave him a long sleeve sheepskin coat. He hired a satan's car for uh, his journey and took Daniel along to escort him to Darshan. This chapter is a travelogue. The narrator is sharing his experience when he undertook a travel from Ravu to Mount Kailash. His uh, aim is to complete his Kora. Kora means a meditation. Now let me give you a brief outline about the writer. Nick Middleton was born 1960, is a British physical geographer and a supernumerary fellow of uh, St. Anne's College, Oxford. He specializes uh, in desertification. Nick Middleton was uh, born in London, England. As a geographer, uh, he has traveled to more than 50 countries, going to extremes is a television program for uh, Channel 4 about extreme lifestyles, in which uh, Middleton expresses life in the hostile conditions other cultures must endure. He won the Royal Geographical Society's uh, uh, Ness Award in 2002. He has appeared on BBC's uh, uh, Through the Keyhole. So these are the details about the writer and the narrator of this uh, uh, travelogue, Nick Middleton. As the protagonist was uh, heading towards Mount Kailash to complete his uh, Kora in the morning, he witnessed a beautiful half moon in the blue sky. The clouds looked like French bread which uh, glowed pink because of the sun which spread a slash of rays on the mountain tops. It looked like a rose tinted blush. Ravu and uh, Lamo wanted to give him a farewell gift. One evening when the protagonist passed a message to Lamo through Daniel, she gave him a long sleeved sheepskin coat which is meant for men. Sadan looked at him attentively while he climbed into the car. He declared yes and said Drogba to him which means Kora in the region of Tibet. They took a shortcut to cut the Changtang. His driver knew the short route which took them to the southwest towards Mount Kailash. They had to pass high mountain passes. Uh, Sadan told him that uh, they can reach the destination only if there is no snow and they can't know that until they will reach there. So this is the journey they have started. Before that uh, uh, his friend Lamo offered him a sheep skin coat to protect him from the chilling cold or freezing weather. So he hired uh, the car of uh, Sedan and started the journey. Sedan knew the route and uh, he decided to uh, go through a shortcut which uh, helps them to reach Mount Kailas very soon. On the way, the driver Sedan informed uh, the narrator that if only there was no snow, they can pass easily through that mountain but uh, it's a high mountain so the presence of uh, uh, the snow can't be predicted. The route was filled with uh, open plains in Ravu where uh, gazelles were eating grasses from the land which had the little rain and uh, disapproved while hopping back in the void. As they moved forward a large group of wild asses appeared. Sadan told him that uh, they were approaching the wild asses long before they appeared there. 
Sadan pointed out a huge pile of dust which uh, he called Kyang in his local language. When they drew near to the destination, they could see a large group of animals progressing in a fast and uncontrollable manner, like they were doing military exercises. Trials of dust filled with uh, uh, air as they moved past the rocky area, they came across private koras nurturing their group of birds. Both men and women started at their car and some also waved at them. As they moved closer to the animals, the sheep would take a slippery path and would suddenly move into another direction away uh, from the car. They witnessed nomads' tents uh, which were dark in complete isolation and a big black Tibetan dog standing as their guard. They fixed their gaze uh, on the approaching car and ran behind it as a bullet fired from a gun. So here in this above passage, uh, he was uh, the narrator was explaining what are the things he had seen. He had seen the wild asses, uh, similar to hooves, uh, smaller than hooves, uh, such animal they have seen. Another thing they have seen the large group of animals uh, progressing. Uh, moving forward uh, in a very uncontrollable way it create dust and another thing the other people who are progressing to Mount Kailash to complete their chorus uh, he had seen that uh, uh, group of people also then the uh, sheep moving in the slippery way and just moving suddenly some other way and they he had seen uh, the nomads, the native people or the tribal people there and uh, also the dog, a very strong dog which uh, protecting them. They are running after uh, the dogs, running after their car. So they have to speed up to escape from these dogs. So these are the uh, things uh, he had seen on the way uh, in his travel. Those uh, bushy creatures were uh, blacker than the normal black color who wore a bright red color and they barked angrily at them with uh, big jaws. Those dogs were fearless and were running towards the car causing Sedan to apply brakes and change direction suddenly. The dogs ran after them for a uh, hundred meters more and uh, then stopped to watch them go away. These Tibetan Mastiffs became popular in China's royal courts as hunting dogs. They were brought along the Silk Route as tribute in ancient times from Tibet. As they passed the area with the bushy Tibetan dogs, uh, they started witnessing snow-capped mountains. They entered the valley which was covered with a wide river covered with the ice which was white and shiny in the sun. The track was moving along the river bank as they gained height and the valley was closing in towards them. So here the narrator again uh, giving some more details about that uh, uh, Tibetan mastiffs, the dogs. It is very black and uh, very angry animals. They are not uh, afraid of anything. They are approaching the car by the time the driver has to turn the other side and even they ran after them for some time. Uh, they have passed uh, uh, these dogs and uh, they are popular. They are popular in China, China also. These dogs are used for hunting. Then they just moved from the place. They have seen the mountains, uh, the snow capped mountains from uh, this distance uh, they could see the mountains they have reached the valley and uh, the river was covered with ice because it is a, a very uh, freezing cold season the surface of the river is covered with ice and it is shining when the sunlight falls on it the driver was driving in third gear while the turns were sharper and the ride got bumpier. Then they moved away from the road which uh, ran along the icy river. 
it had uh, sharp slopes and big rocks coated with uh, thick sticky orange lesion below the rocks were chunks of snow the protagonist felt a pressure on his ears he held his nose and uh, snorted in order to clear them a sharp turn came again and the sedan stopped the car and jumped out from his seat david too did the same he exclaimed snow in his excitement a long track of snow was in front of them which was about 15 meter long before it diminished and the normal dirty track appeared again the snow was on both sides of uh, them and it was difficult to move the vehicle in that condition the pro- protagonist joined uh, daniel as sadan tried to move smoothly over the snow surface by stamping on his foot on the surface the protagonist saw his wrist watch they were 5210 meters above sea level so they have faced a very rough road off road they have to travel and uh, it had a uh, sharp slopes uh, if they are not driving carefully it may fell into the valley uh, so uh, and also the protagonist felt the pressure because they are climbing up the hill so he felt the pressure on his ears so he tried to snort it to clear his ear and uh, again and again the sharp uh, turns came and suddenly uh, this man exclaimed the driver exclaimed that there was snow in front of uh, the uh, some uh, some meters they can find snow so it is quite difficult to move uh, the narrator identified there they were in at the height of 5210 uh, meter from the sea level so it is quite difficult for them to move forward without clearing the snow the snow was deep beneath its icy top surface daniel said that if they turned their car over they could slip off sedan grabbed dirt and uh, threw it across the frozen surface they pitched in and uh, helped uh, sedan until the snow Uh, with the soil appeared on it loaded the tension of sadan he drove back the car and slowly drove to the more comfortable side of the road after 10 minutes sadan stopped again as another obstacle came in front of them they drove around the snowy track which was steep and filled with uh, rocks he further drove from the hairpin bent moving uh, on the higher side where the snow was still there the protagonist checked his watch again while he was climbing the mountain in the bright sunlight they moved up to 5400 meters height and uh, his head began to pulsate again he had a few sips of water from his bottle which helped him to climb the slope so here they just filled the road with the mud to avoid the slippery surface and slowly he drove the vehicle to the other side again they have faced uh, the uh, another obstacle that uh, they could not move further again as another obstacle came in front of them that is a snowy track which was steep and filled with uh, rocks so it is very difficult to uh, move forward and another hairpin bend also they have to face and uh, the protagonist again checked the height and uh, they were at uh, 5400 meter height from the sea level he just had some water because he felt uh, uh head began to pulsate again and he felt a little bit dizziness and also and uh, headache because of the atmospheric pressure so he had some water that helped him to climb the slope they reached at uh, 5515 meters and a large pile of stone was decorated with a white silk scarf some dirty prayer flags they took a turn around that the stone in a clockwise direction as in the tradition uh, and the driver checked the tires of his vehicle 
He stopped at the petrol tank and uh, unscrewed its top which uh, made a loud hiss noise as the pressure was making the fuel expand. The driver told him maybe it's dangerous but told him not to smoke around there. His uh, headache cleared as they descended down the slope. It was 2 o'clock when they stopped for lunch. At a long canvas tent beside the dry salt lake, they had hot noodles. The plateau was disfigured and the lake was filled with salty water and thatched roof covered with snow. It had uh, traces of extinct uh, Tethys Ocean which used to border Tibet before the collision of the continent. Few men were working there with uh, pick axes and shovels. They were wearing sunglasses to minimize the glare coming from blue trucks loaded with a pile of salt, salt, encrusted boots and long sheepskin coats. Here Sadan warned the narrator that and the other person uh, not to smoke because the uh, because of the pressure the fuel was expanding and uh, when they descent from that uh, height uh, the narrator's headache uh, became cleared and then they had noodles uh, they have came to the plateau uh, and it was a disfigured plateau and they have found a uh, lake filled with uh, salty water and it is a sign that uh, the extinction of the ocean named Tethys uh, while the collision of continents uh, uh, millions of years back. So they had seen each and everything and the people are uh, going in the truck, the other people are working there, everything they had seen there. By the late afternoon they reached uh, Hor town and back to the east-west highway which was an old route from Laksa to Kashmir. Daniel found a ride as he was on his way back to Lhasa. Both of them bid, bid him farewell at a tire repair shop. Their car suffered two punctures on, on the way from the salt lake, so Sadan was eager to get them fixed. They had no spare tire left and the second tire which he changed was replaced by a smooth tire just like the head of the protagonist. Hort was an ugly and miserable place which had no vegetation and just uh, dust and rocks. It is scattered and gathered a refuse and it was luckless uh, that it was on the shore of Lake Manasarovar which is Tibet's most respected water. According to ancient Hindu and Buddhist Cosmologists, it consists of four Indian rivers, the Indus, the Ganges, uh, the Satluj and the Brahmaputra. Satluj river flows uh, from uh, this lake and other three rivers rise near the sides of Mount Kailash. They were in a remarkable distance and he was eager to build ahead. So now uh, they have to uh, use the route from last to Kashmir, Lhasa to Kashmir. Daniel left them here because he has to go back to Lhasa and uh, they have faced uh, a problem that uh, a few times their car punctured and they have repaired. And another important uh, thing the narrator was explaining that uh, they have reached the particular town but it is not very uh, good looking. It's an ugly looking, no vegetation such a town and it is uh, on the shore of uh, river Manasarovar and uh, uh, he was talking about uh, some important rivers uh, like uh, Ganges, Sadlaj, Brahmaputra and uh, Indus, uh, their origin and how important uh, these rivers to the people. These are the things he was explaining. He waited for Sadan while having some tea at uh, Horse Cafe. Uh, which was constructed badly from painted concrete and uh, three broken windows. Although it had a good view of the lake, the protagonist was served by a Chinese boy who was wearing a military uniform. 
he spread the grease around his table with a dirty cloth and brought him a glass and a thermos of tea thermos means uh, a mug or a flask sadan freed him from his uh, private detention and they started their journey ahead uh, passing more ropes and rubbish the protagonist experience uh, was opposite from what he read on the traveler's first encounters of the town Ikai Kawaguchi was a Japanese monk who arrived in the town in 1900. He was so moved with the purity of the lake that he cried after a few years similar effect was on when Hedin a Swedish who didn't have such a emotional outburst. So he was uh, thinking about the bad atmosphere and uh, the place uh, he had tea and how dirty it was everything. Uh, he he was explaining and he was remembering the thing he has read was not he couldn't find there the particular place lost its charm and uh, the serenity it has before i am going to stop the narration here the explanation here now read the text the balanced part of the story i will explain you in the next video see you in the next class bye